If you like our video, click the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel and get easy access to new content. To see our full suite of ad-free video courses and training materials, visit us at teachucomp.com. In Access, you are manipulating a contained collection of smaller objects within the database file. Although the terms database and table are often used interchangeably, you should refer to the entire collection of tables, queries, forms, reports, macros, and modules as the database, and only refer to tables as tables for clarity's sake. Access is also a relational database program. In a relational database, you store large amounts of data into the smallest possible increments in the tables. You then relate these tables together by joining common fields between them. This lets the database store less redundant data, which makes it operate more quickly and efficiently. When you relate tables, you can then access any data in the related tables. A database file is designed to store information and retrieve it later. The many types of objects in a database file work together to do this. However, to create an effective and useful database file, you must learn how to design and create many different types of objects. This is one of the main reasons learning relational database design is more difficult than learning many other types of applications. We will now examine the various types of database objects and their use in the overall scheme of database design. The first and most fundamental database object is the table. A table is a collection of data about a certain subject or entity, like customers, vendors, or suppliers. It contains columns and rows into which you store data. The columns all contain only one type of data and are called fields. For example, a customer table may contain a first name field, which stores only customer first names. The rows in a table all contain one set of related field information for a single entry and are called records. For example, a customer table may contain a customer record, storing all the field information about that specific customer within a row. Tables are the building blocks of almost all other types of database objects. Tables contain all the information to store, manipulate, and retrieve. Therefore, almost everything in a database fundamentally depends on the tables and their structure. So while new users often feel comfortable or familiar with the concept of database tables, it is important not to approach table design too quickly or haphazardly. Errors made during table creation and design often cause later problems for the table's related objects, forcing you to go back and redesign or edit the tables and the related objects. Creating well-designed tables and joining them correctly is one of the most difficult aspects of relational database design. It is certainly the aspect new users have the most difficulty understanding. It is also the most important aspect of relational database design. The next type of database object to discuss is the query. The purpose of a query is to extract only the data you want or need to view from the tables. These objects are the heart of database design and the whole point of using databases. The queries provide the data needed by the other database objects, often working in the background, so mastering queries is an important part of creating a functional database. While you mainly use queries to extract data for reporting, they can also modify data too. The next type of database object to review is the form. Forms provide user interfaces for their associated underlying tables. They are also used to control the flow of the database program for users. A form typically allows database users to edit data or click buttons that then open reports and perform other database tasks. Forms are the face of your database, as they are often all the user will see and with which the users will interact when using a finished database. The next type of database object to discuss is the report. Reports show data from queries or tables in a more printer-friendly format than the queries or tables themselves provide. Reports can also perform secondary calculations and analysis on the query data, making them very powerful data analysis tools. The next type of database object to examine is the macro. 
Macros are small bits of visually created programming that help automate the most common database processes. For example, if you wanted a user to click a button in a form to open a report, you could first create a macro that opens the report. You then attach the macro to the buttons on click event in the form, so when a user clicks the forms button, it runs the macro which opens the report. The final type of database object to discuss is the module. Modules have a similar purpose to macros. However, modules are created in a non-visual environment. When creating modules, you must type code into a separate Microsoft Visual Basic application window. Modules use a sister language of the Visual Basic language called Visual Basic for Applications, or VBA, to create more complex programs than the ones created by visual design in the macros. Note that modules are rarely needed by the typical Access Database Designer. However, they are valuable for the professional database designer. A database should be simple, logical, and straightforward in its design. In general, you use forms to enter information into the tables. The data is stored in these tables, which are related to each other as necessary. You then use queries to pull specific information from the tables in the database. The queries often form the basis for reports, which will then let you view the information you requested. Once this system is in place, you can automate it by using macros and modules to simplify and streamline the processes involved in entering, storing, and retrieving data. This is the main reason that you use databases, to enter, store, and retrieve data. Remember to click the subscribe button to see more of our videos. Get ad-free courses at teachucomp.com.